Well, thanks to science fiction, if you take the word government and laboratory, automatically there's conspiracy theories and people wondering what we're doing. When you take that and you put it on an island where nobody's allowed to go to, the theories and the conspiracies just kind of cycle up. You hear about Nazi scientists and alien technology and DNA modification and, and all of it is just absolutely false. The reason why we're here is to keep hamburgers from being $100 a piece. Plum Island, a small island off the eastern tip of Long Island, New York, a former coast artillery post, is now the U.S. bastion against foreign animal diseases. One thing we don't want people to understand is what we do here is trying to protect the nation's livestock, which protects the food supply and our economy. We do no classified work at Plum Island. All the work that we do, we publish all of our science. Everything is very out in the open. The laboratory was built out here over 60 years ago. We wanted to make sure when we built the lab that if we were going to have any live virus that it was not on the mainland and could not be spread. The laboratory was built out here on an island to keep it safe. I'm a veterinarian. I became a veterinarian because I care about people, and I care about the public, and I care about the food supply. One of the biggest threats to that is a disease like foot and mouth disease that doesn't exist in this country and hasn't been here since 1929. America needs Plum Island because what we do is make sure that foreign animal diseases, diseases that don't exist in livestock in this country are controlled. So if you have a disease like foot and mouth disease, which the last outbreak in this country was 1929, what's an animal's infected? It's infected for three years. That means you have to kill it and you have to bury it. What you have to understand about agriculture is if you go in and kill that herd, you've just killed out all the genetic improvements of 100 years. So bringing that back is going to be very difficult. It's estimated that we had an outbreak of foot and mouth disease in this country, the impact would be over $50 billion just in the first year. It took us $180 billion to get our markets back and to get the economy back and the food supply back. And it could be catastrophic depending on how long it took it to get under control. Doing research on these pathogens is, of course, difficult to do, yet it's sort of exactly what we have to do. And these are places where we can learn about how pathogens will change in certain environments, so what opportunities we might be providing to pathogens in the world at large, you can kind of recreate that in these extremely secure labs to see how will pathogens change. That would give us a huge head start if we could pinpoint where are these pathogens changing in ways that would allow them to have pandemic causing potential. If we could figure that out, then we could potentially contain them before they start to spread. Plum Island is a very unique place. Many of the research that we're doing, indeed, we are uh, perhaps number one in the world. Our vaccine, the one that we developed, was the first molecular vaccine was against one single, what we call a virus serotype. And South America right now is at the edge of eradicating food disease using vaccines against that particular strain. There is no one size fits all vaccine for food mouth disease. Uh, one of the main obstacles is actually Mother Nature itself. Similar to what we have in flu, where the virus is ever-changing and new viruses coming up, is not one virus, it's multiple viruses. They behave differently, they change, they don't stay the same for long. One vaccine to address all of those different viruses, it probably will not be possible. On a scale of one to 10 for safety, Plum Island lands at an 11. There has never been a case of a person coming down with foot and mouth disease here at Plum Island, mainly because it's not a zoonotic disease and non-infectious to humans. There are four biosafety levels. This lab that we're in right now is a biosafety level two. You're working with agents that are non-infectious to humans or animals or that have a vaccine or treatment if you do get exposed. There are some viruses that are in our hot list that we want to have vaccines for. And obviously those are viruses that are currently circulating in areas of high risk that could easily come to us. We want to have vaccines that are flexible enough that we can create a new vaccine against that new strain that just came up. What we do in the animal wings, which is the biosafety level three, a lot of the work is testing these countermeasures, these vaccines against animals that are infected with 
foot and mouth disease. The animals are checked for the typical foot and mouth disease lesion, which is a vesicle generally found on the feet. It entails examining the hooves and then scoring the animals based on different treatment groups. And that gives you an indicator of the efficacy of your vaccine or countermeasure. Humans cannot act as a biological carrier, but we can act as a physical carrier of the virus, which is why we shower out and we leave our clothes inside the lab. The animals do not come out of BSL-3. One of our most significant accomplishments at Palm Island Animal Disease Center has been the licensing of the first new foot and mouth disease vaccine that you can actually manufacture in the United States and you can vaccinate to live. The cost for developing these vaccines, when you look at the impact, you could pay for the cost of this vaccine in a couple hours in an outbreak. This is a $1 trillion agriculture economy in this country. This is talking about the cost that your family is going to have to pay for their food. If it's 6 to 8% of your income, that's one thing. What if it doubles and triples? Families can't afford that. So what motivates me to, to get up every day is the knowledge that I can make a contribution. I can make a contribution in protecting the health and protecting the livestock and protecting this nation and make it more secure and improve the quality of life for everyone. Here's our shithead, right there. My name is Carol Clement and I'm the farmer here at Heather Ridge Farm. We raise sheep and goats. We have our own breeding flocks of them. We also raise pigs, cattle, and uh, we've been running the farm full-time for 12 years. I hope we never see another outbreak of foot and mouth in this country. That would be really terrible. I saw firsthand what it was doing in Ireland and England. The horrible thing was how many animals had to be slaughtered since they thought that was the best way to stop it. So I am very concerned, should it ever be here. If I had to slaughter my farm animals because of some kind of disease, it would be a financial disaster. Um, you know, I, I don't know how any farm survives that. I'm really glad a facility like Palm Island exists to keep the livestock safe. Research is done and animals are quarantined. The virtue of it being on an island is that you can't spread problems to neighboring farms. You've got a, a nice body of water all around it. Being a small farm in the country, we don't have easy access to good vets. I have to find out information myself. I have to diagnose animals. I have to know how to treat. I know I have to have what um, remedies on hand to deal with things. So I, I need more research to be done. I'm glad that the research is being done more locally because a lot of the issues of diseases have to do with the place. Part of the problem that I've seen is that corporations aren't doing research if, if they don't think they can make a lot of money off it. There are uh, treatments available in other countries that are not available here because no one wants to bother the time to test it because they don't think they'll make enough money off it. So there are things that already exist that corporations here are ignoring that would be really useful to the farmers here. Although we have not had foot and mouth disease in this country for decades, we do receive samples from other countries. So we do provide capacity building and diagnostic support to other countries where the disease is endemic. And we recently received a request from Korea to help them with a control strategy for the outbreak that they're facing. So we're exploring the venues to support them with vaccines right now. We train field veterinarians in identifying any of these foreign animal diseases. They go into the field and they investigate any suspect case as a foreign animal disease. When they see a potential case, they take samples and those samples arrive here in this helipad. It's extremely intense. Everything is high stakes, so there is a lot of tension. Luckily, we have a really, really qualified staff, so they manage the stress pretty well. The results of these samples needs to come out in about three to six hours. This is extremely important because that's what's going to help us to either stop movement of animals, establish quarantine zones in the public. They don't really understand what it takes to get that steak or chicken in the grocery store, and also it's cheap. If we identify anything, we can activate the North American Vaccine Bank here at Plum Island, which has vaccine it to vaccinate for foot and mouth disease. And then we can respond to that outbreak and vaccinate the animals rather than kill the animals. If you can predict how a pathogen might change or how a pathogen is changing, then you can kind of take all the steam out of an epidemic. You can stanch it before it even happens. 
Plum Island is a laboratory that's been here for 65 years. We have to move on and they are building a new laboratory. Uh, that laboratory is going to be in Manhattan, Kansas, and that laboratory will be able to not only work at BSL-3, which we work here, we'll be able to work at BSL-4. BSL-4 is a level where you wear spacesuits. You're working with diseases that not only kill animals, they kill people, and there's no vaccine. We have to have that capability. So I look at Plum Island has a long history of protecting this country, but we're going to continue on and we're going to have even a better lab and be able to protect the country even better.